One of my earliest memories is watching Kelly Holmes win her first Olympic gold medal in 2004. I can remember so clearly the look of surprise and excitement on her face when she realised that she had won. A few days later, I watched her win a second gold medal, and this time she looked even more thrilled and stunned than the first time. I cut this picture out of a newspaper and stuck it on my bedroom wall and thought to myself that one day I wanted to do what she had done, despite the fact that at the time I didn't really know what it was that she had done. <laughs> I didn't even know her name. I was three, and to me she was just known as the running lady. A few years later, I watched every World Cup match I could with my dad. And though I was only five, I decided then and there that one day I was going to be a footballer as good as David Beckham. I begged my parents for a football strip and asked them if I could join the football club at school, which I did. I played football after school all that year and I was the only girl and the shortest person by what felt like a mile. At the end of the year, they gave out some trophies. I was awarded Best Attitude. <laughs> now, my mum said that's the best award there is, but I knew she was wrong. I was five. Why would I want the best attitude if I could score the most goals and win best player? I've never stopped playing football, but I realised quite soon it wasn't going to be a sport that really felt like it belonged to me. I wanted to find something that I could really enjoy and throw myself into. I tried so many things. Every sport you can imagine, plus rock climbing, dancing, cubs, playing the drums, and even the trombone. <laughs> I've never stopped trying things and moving on, trying things and moving on, trying things and moving on again and again and again, because I was always desperate to find that thing that I really loved. Not only was I inspired by Kelly Holmes and David Beckham, but I was inspired by my own family. My godfather, a drummer in a band. My uncle, a passionate ballet dancer. My dad, who loves running. And my other uncle, committed to his career in medicine. Now, my primary school always had lots of clubs and activities, and I tried so many things and had loads of fun but I was still looking for that thing that would make me feel like Kelly Holmes. That thing that was my thing. Just like my uncle's thing is drumming, uh, just like my godfather's thing is drumming, my uncle's thing is ballet, and Kelly Holmes' thing is, of course, running. One day, two letters came home from school about two new clubs that were starting. One was a cycling club, the other was a softball club. Now, I love riding my bike, and my mum said, go to the cycling one. You know you'll enjoy it. She said, I've never even heard of softball. Of course, I wanted to go to both clubs, but they were both on the same day, so I couldn't. I don't know why, but I chose to go to the softball one, even though I didn't know what it was either. I went to softball, and within two weeks, I was hooked. It was such a great game. I begged my parents to buy me a softball mitt, and though they probably thought, here we go again, they did. I was so proud of my new glove that I took it and showed it to the coach. She was very kind about my glove, even though I later found out we had bought completely the wrong thing. She asked me if I liked the game, and when I said I loved it, she asked me if I would like to try out for what she called a proper team. Of course, I said I would love that. I was very excited at the thought. A few days later, my mum received an email. The first sentence said, Betsy Holden's invitation to trial for Great Britain under 13 fast pitch softball team. We were all stunned. <laughs> we had no idea that the coach had been talking about the national team. Mum took me to the trial. I was 10 at the time and, as usual, shortest one there. Everyone seemed older than me too. I just hadn't realised what a big thing this was going to be. I was petrified. It turned out that we were trialling not just for a place on the Great Britain squad, but for a place on a team that would be travelling to Holland for a European tournament. 
The trial went on for several hours and I was exhausted by the end. Unlike the other girls, I just wasn't used to playing for hours at a time. At the end, they called the girls together and read out the names of those who were selected. Now, I'd only been playing the game for a few weeks by then, so I whispered to my mum I was sure I wouldn't make it. Even so, when they didn't call my name, I felt absolutely gutted. But I decided I wasn't going to stop playing softball because I had enjoyed the trial. But then, my name was called. Not as part of the travelling squad, but as a reserve. I wouldn't be travelling to Holland, but I was part of the Great Britain squad. Looking back, that was probably the best option. Given that I'd only been playing the game for a few weeks, I definitely wasn't ready to travel to Holland. But I could still feel pleased and proud at how the day had gone, which I did. But looking back, I guess I was a little disappointed. I suppose it's wrong to hope that someone would get ill so I could take their place. <laughs> But I admit I did sometimes. But it never happened. However, being selected got me a place in the UK Softball Academy and I trained all winter with the rest of the team as hard as I could. I got a proper glove and got anyone and everyone to practice with me in my garden. My teacher at school heard about softball and asked me to bring in my equipment and teach the class how to play, which I did, and we all had an amazing time. I read everything I could about the game. I watched matches on YouTube. I bought all the equipment. And before long, I realised I was totally obsessed. The following summer, when I was 11, I went to my second trial. And this time, I was lucky enough to be selected to travel to Italy to play in a European tournament. Playing in Italy was the toughest thing I've ever done, but also the best. I loved every minute and learned so much. This summer, I played in my second European tournament, again in Italy, and again, I had the most fantastic experience. But when I go up to pitch, or bat, I still feel as scared as I did on my first trial, and I don't think that will ever change, but at least now, I know it's worth it. Softball is much more than a game to me. I've learned to be away from home, to play in a team, and get along with people. It's taught me to be brave and that being the smallest isn't such a big deal after all. The coaches and older players have become my role models and mentors and I've made loads of new friends. I've met girls from America, Mexico, Russia, Italy, Slovakia and the Czech Republic. And though we can't always speak each other's languages, we can still communicate with three words, softball and of course, one direction. <laughs> Why did I choose a sport I'd never heard of instead of one I knew I liked? For that exact reason, I suppose. By the time softball came along, it became my habit to try anything new that came my way. I sometimes wondered if I would ever find something that would be truly special to me, but I did eventually. I know I've got a lot to learn, and I know I can't play my sport as well as, well as Kelly Holmes can run, but I'm sure I love my game as much as she does. And I truly hope I never stop taking chances, and making the most of every opportunity that comes my way. Thank you. <laughs>